NCAA 2K20 on GA Sports is brought to you by Derek's NCAA 2020-2021 rosters. These are the most authentic college basketball rosters ever produced, featuring true-to-life player faces, ratings, and tendencies, as well as fully customized teams, coaches, and lineups. Check out the Patreon featured in the description so you can get the roster when it drops, plus monthly updates. Come be a part of the most ambitious project in sports gaming by clicking the link in the description. It's the moment you've all been waiting for, the NCAA 2K20 Selection Show. We will find the 16 teams that will be competing for the national championship when it's all said and done. We are going to see some of the best matchups, some of the best games in the entire series. I think there is no doubt. Without further ado, let's get straight into the selection process where we will first unveil all of our number one seeds. And here they are, counting down from the rankings, number one overall, Duke Blue Devils, number two, Seton Hall, number three, Purdue, and number four is the Memphis Tigers. Those will be your four number one seeds. Where are they going? Duke will head out into the east region. Seton Hall will head out into the south. Purdue gets the central region, and the Memphis Tigers will head out west to sunny California to play their games. This is a strong group of number one seeds. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? No surprise there. A lot of these teams actually are coming from uh, the southeast region of the state. So unfortunately, I say unfortunately, but, you know, fortunately, I guess, for Memphis, they're headed out west to, as you said, sunny California. But, um, <laughs> you, you know, it, it's going to be these all of these teams are tough, tough tests for whoever else is in their region. I think this is one of the most mo one of the most stacked top seeds we had ever and you know I mean this is the tournament for a reason we could see one of them fall early or they could all four make it late you never know yep I think you're absolutely right about that let's move on to the number twos that we are going to see and we'll lay them out for you once again number five overall is the Florida Gators number six the Texas Tech Red Raiders number seven the Kansas State Wildcats and number eight the Kentucky Wildcats where are they going Let's start with Kentucky. They will have to travel out east to deal with the number one overall seed, Duke Blue Devils. So tough matchup for them. Kansas State will head out west to take on Memphis as the number one seed in their region. That obviously won't be their first game, but uh, Memphis is always lurking. Texas Tech will head into the central region where Purdue is setting up camp. And then the number five overall seed, Florida Gators, will see Seton Hall in the south region, something that could benefit Florida, even though the number two overall seed is there. But that means that Florida will be able to play a home game in the first round, considering that they will be hosting in the south region. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the interesting thing about this is Texas Tech is our first team that wasn't guaranteed a spot. We have four teams that weren't guaranteed spots. They have taken one of those. Um, so they have made it in and they went to the central region as well. So, you know, Texas Tech from, you know, being on the bubble to I think get, getting a bit more of a favorable matchup in Purdue with with Purdue in that region, you know, we'll see how the rest of the region shapes up to be. But I think Texas Tech was really smart in choosing to go there. That's a really good point. Let's talk about the number three seeds. And once again, we will start in terms of their overall ranking. Number nine overall is the USC Trojans. Number 10, the North Carolina Tar Heels. Number 11, the UCLA Bruins. And coming in at number 12, the Villanova Wildcats overall. Both Villanova and North Carolina have made uh, have been selected as at-large bids for the NCAA tournament. Just one remains. Now, where are they going? Let's start with the Villanova Wildcats. They will have to head out east to take on the Duke Blue Devils, so they'll be close to home. Uh, but once again, Duke is the number one overall seed, and they are the one seed in that region. UCLA will head down south. Their first round match will be against Florida with Seton Hall as the number one seed in that region. I'm sure we have a lot to say about UCLA taking on Florida. <laughs> USC will head into the central region to take on Texas Tech in their first matchup with Purdue as that number one seed. And then the at-large North Carolina Tar Heels will head out west where they will meet Kansas State. Memphis is, of course, the number one seed there. Absolutely. I think this is interesting. 
where these teams have gone as well. Um, you know, I think North Carolina has gone to a region in the West where, you know, James Wiseman is with Memphis and um, I'm blanking on his first name right now for whatever reason, but Love, I believe, is his last name for Kansas State, a big center as well. And then um, North Carolina has Baco as well, so that's going to be a, a region full of centers at this point. Rakosovic, I think, may could get a date matchup with uh, Matt Harms there to show off his power if they can get past Texas Tech. Um, you know, but yeah, the other regions, you know, it's we got the two Wildcat teams against each other here. It's it's all kicking off here. It's, it's setting up for some very tasty scenarios, to say the least. I think you're absolutely right. And now let's get on to the teams that will be facing our number one seeds in the first round. We will start with the Syracuse Orange qualifying directly out of the ACC. The Michigan State Spartans with the turnaround of the century automatically qualifying out of the Big Ten. The Kansas Jayhawks finished second in the Big 12, so they are in. And the final at-large bid will go to the 10-6 Auburn Tigers. Congratulations to them for grabbing that final at-large bid. Now let's see where they're going. We'll start with Auburn, and you talked about a region that is full of big men. Well, now Austin Wiley will join the mix as Auburn heads out to the West region. The Kansas Jayhawks will get to say, stay close to home, but they will have to head up to Indiana to take on Purdue in the Central region. Michigan State will head down south to take on Seton Hall as their number one seed. And then finally, Syracuse. They've played Duke twice. Duke beat them by more than 50 points at one time. And Syracuse will have to play them again as they head out to the east region where Duke, the number one overall seed, is the number one seed there. Let's take a look at the full bracket now that we have all of our teams announced, one through 16. And man, let's let's talk about each matchup on here. We're gonna show you every single one of them. It's gonna be so much fun. There's so many things that I'm looking forward to. Let's start with, of course, the number one overall seed, Duke. Uh, their game is against Syracuse, and, and you know, like I said, Syracuse has struggled against Duke in the past, but this is the tournament, and and the Orange looked a lot more competent against Duke in their final game against the Blue Devils. So, you know, you never know what could happen. And this this is the number one overall seed taking on the lowest overall seed. And still, you feel like an upset could potentially be on the cards here. Yeah, absolutely. And it's all based on what you said there, that last game between Syracuse and Duke. Syracuse did find some fight against the Blue Devils, you know. This will be their third time playing them. I think, you know, they've obviously closed the gap from game one to game two. Can they do it and flip that di differential in game three? I mean, that's that's for you all to find out and for us to find <laughs> out as well. <laughs> Exactly, no doubt about that. And the winner, of course, of that game will take on the winner of Kentucky versus Villanova. This is a case of one of the best players in the country, EJ Montgomery for the Kentucky Wildcats, taking on a very balanced Villanova attack uh, that has met several players that could really hurt you. And Villanova, they, they did fall off a little bit towards the end of the conference season, but this is still a really, really good Wildcats team. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it's going to be so interesting seeing Kentucky go against Villanova in terms of best player from a team from, you know, pre preemptively the, one of the best conferences. So Villanova sitting at 9-8 and eight is no joke. Um, but neither, you know, neither is Kentucky. Neither is when you have the best defensive player there. So I think that's a really tasty, if you have my prediction, low-scoring matchup. So I, I'm really excited to see what the two Wildcats have to offer. Okay, all right. Well, I'm certainly excited for that one as well. On that same side of the bracket, the Memphis Tigers are the other number one overall seed. They will take on Auburn. This matchup is going to be all about the freshman of the year, one of the best centers in the country, James Weissman, taking on another one of the best centers in the country, maybe the best offensive center in the nation, Austin Wiley from Auburn. This is going to be, like you say, a very tasty matchup. Absolutely, and this might have been one of the worst four seeds to play Memphis. I would say, I would <laughs> argue, I would argue Kansas, but I think Auburn's a little bit more of a complete team in terms of front court. I think Azabuki's a better center than Wiley, but when you look about teams, I think Auburn's a bit better than Kansas, which is why this Auburn team should worry Memphis. You know, they like you said, it's Wiley versus Wiseman, the two W's out there. But I think you're looking at it, it's 
neither team's particularly deep, but each team's starting five is really strong. So we'll see what happens in that matchup there. Yep, you are absolutely right. And the winner will go on to take on the winner of Kansas State against North Carolina. Once again, we've got another big man matchup. Jordan Love from the Kansas State Wildcats taking on Armando Baco from the North Carolina Tar Heels. But these are also two teams that enjoy a lot of balance. I really don't know which way the scales could tip in this one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and again, more battle of the centers here, but it's going to be really interesting. It's going to be, in my, in my opinion, it's going to be which Cole Anthony shows up. The one during North Carolina's losing streak or the one that when they win, they look really impressive. They look flashy. They look like a North Carolina team, you know. I think that's going to be the difference here. Um, North Carolina is also one of the top teams defensively in the country. So, again, I don't expect it to be a high-scoring game. Um, but I think look for that differential to be Cole Anthony there. Makes sense to me. Moving on to the other side of the bracket, of course, we have Seton Hall. And, man, this matchup, they will take on the Michigan State Spartans, one of, if not the hottest team in the country, given what they had to pull themselves out of after an 0-8 start to find their way into this tournament. This is the ultimate Cinderella story, and they will get tested in their first matchup against Seton Hall. What do the Spartans have to do to come out victorious against the Red Hot Pirates? Oh my gosh, this is a tasty matchup of shooters. Let me tell y'all something. We have Jared Roden, number two in shooting guard of the year, versus number one, Josh Langford. My God, what a dream matchup that is there. You know, don't dis discredit these Spartans here. They have been red hot late. I believe they've won their last seven games in a row to put them in this position here. Um, don't don't discredit them. Seton Hall is really good. Seton Hall is a favorite of mine that I hope goes deep, and I've said that throughout uh, this whole NCAA 2K, falling in love with them. But, man, am I ever worried for them against Michigan State here. And I think that that worry is definitely justified. And even if they get past Michigan State, they will have to take on the winner of a matchup that means a lot personally for the two of us. It's number two, Florida, taking on number three, UCLA. These are our two teams. We've been arguing about these teams since we were kids when we were watching these two go at it in Final Fours in national championships. This is a matchup with a lot of history and a matchup that in NCAA 2K20 in particular is going to be a lot of fun. These are two teams that match up very well. I want to know who the committee is. Who do, who's done this to us in the first round? Come on, man. <laughs> like, my gosh, it, it, we, we couldn't, I, I think we couldn't have dreamed for, you know, a worse scenario for our two teams right here because, you know, one of our personal favorites is, you know, is going to be out. And you hope on your side, you know, I know as, as great as some teams are here, you, you can only dream that you get to use UCLA and, you know, win the NCAA 2K title with them, you know. Well, exactly. Same here with Florida, but it's gonna one of us one of us is gonna have a dream start, and one of us is gonna have a, a miserable exit. So you know, all <laughs> like all I can say here is best of luck. This is gonna be an insane matchup. It's so even between the teams. I think you know Florida in terms of their guards, they have maybe a slight advantage, but UCLA's big men are are pretty tough to handle. So it'll be it'll be really interesting there. No doubt, that is a region of death right there, the South region. Man, the, the, the committee the committee had some fun, you know, setting up that region. That is crazy. Uh, on the other side is, of course, the Purdue Boilermakers. In their first round match, they will be taking on the Kansas Jayhawks. You want to talk about a battle of big men, Matt Harms, center of the year and player of the year, taking on Yudoka Azubuki, who finished just behind him in both of those awards. This is going to be a matchup that that I mean you want to talk about again big man just going at it in the low post that's what we're going to see in this one absolutely and I think that's really all that this uh, matchup really has to offer so it's just the big men going at it against each other it'll be insane to see harms versus Azubuki um, you, you know I think where the differential could be is in you know the role players around these guys who can win their positional battle you know to differentiate between the big men i think the big men can dominate each other in the post and do what they're good at but i think it's what supporting player on the team can make the biggest difference that can sway this game to their team's way 
that will be the story worth following. In the final matchup, let's talk about uh, the winner will play the winner of Purdue and Kansas. Texas Tech taking on USC. These are two teams that you personally have had a lot of success with when you play, and for two very different reasons. Texas Tech comes in with maybe the best pure scorer in the country, that being Chris Clark, and then USC comes in with one of the most dynamic big men in the country in Nick Rakosovic. What is going to be the difference when these two teams face off? Yeah, absolutely. I think the difference here is, you know, they, they met actually earlier. I actually think I had a huge win with USC over Texas Tech earlier in the season. And that in part, <laughs> <You did. laughs> and that in part was Rakosevich, you know. I think Texas Tech, where they do lack a little bit, is in that center game, even though they have two terrific centers. I think Rakosevich is that, just that bigger of a man. Um, but I think Chris Clark, man, if he gets red hot, he could drop 45 on USC. I don't think their perimeter defense is that great. I think that's kind of hurt them. I think, you know, in the, t the games that we've seen USC beat UCLA, UCLA tried to go low and didn't shoot so much from the perimeter. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, if, if Texas Tech can get hot from behind the arc, I think Texas Tech, you know, easily comes away with this one. But, you know what, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see what happens there. Texas Tech does certainly seem to have the makeup of a team that could go deep in the tournament if they start shooting hot, so that will be a story worth keeping an eye on. And by the way, I hate to bring it up, but USC did beat Texas Tech 138-66 to earlier in the NCAA 2K20 series, so uh, Texas Tech will be looking for some revenge coming into this game. We'll show you the bracket one more time, and all that we have to tell you is the NCAA tournament is coming. Next week, we will begin as we show you every single game from the NCAA tournament. You will not want to miss any of these absolutely tantalizing matchups, I'm sure. So, of course, you want to subscribe so you can see all of them and you know when all of them are going up. We're going to have so much fun with this, and I hope you will, too. We appreciate you.